A deadly car bomb rocks Johannesburg just two days before South Africa's landmark elections. And Serb forces impose their own conditions on the evacuation of the wounded from Garajda. This is the CBS Evening News. Good evening, I'm Deborah Norville reporting. The final weekend of campaigning before South Africa's first open election was interrupted by a deadly car bombing in Johannesburg. At least nine people were killed and nearly 100 injured. Though unnerved by the blast, officials promise the voting will begin as scheduled on Tuesday. Alan Pizzi reports. The blast came without warning. It shattered lives and hopes that this week's historic vote would be peaceful. Police estimated that nearly 200 pounds of explosives were placed in or under a car parked between two key offices of the African National Congress. Everything just shattered, windows, doors, everything. An ANC official was among the dead. The bomb was described as the biggest ever used in Johannesburg, and police feared there could be others. Move back, please. I want you to move back, sir, please. As police forensic experts sifted the debris for clues, both the right wing and the Zulu-based Nkata party denied any connection to the act of terror. The ANC blamed enemies of the democratic process, but vowed it would not stop the elections. The best way to deal with this kind of political thuggery is to make sure that democracy wins against intimidation and violence. This was the final day of campaigning before voting begins on Tuesday. Volleys of gunfire punctuated the start of the Encanta rally and killed at least one person. Zulu chief Mangasutu Butalezi urged his supporters to avoid violence and deplored the bombing. And one can only hope and pray that that is an isolated incident and that we're not going to see an escalation of that kind of violence. An estimated 100,000 people turned out to hear Nelson Mandela promise that the ANC had a plan to end the violence and he had a warning for the bombers. Nothing they can do which will stop us from making the 27th of April the historic day in this country. The devastated streets of central Johannesburg may be sealed off until after elections. The bomb blast will add to the tension and security fears for the coming week, putting even more pressure on the already overstretched security forces to guard voters, polling booths, and especially political leaders. While no one has claimed responsibility for the outrage, the intent was clear, to wreck any chance of a peaceful end to 340 years of white rule here. Alan Pizzi, CBS News, Johannesburg. When voting does begin Tuesday, it will be the first time 75% of the populace are eligible to vote. And as correspondent Bill Whitaker reports, teaching them how has been a monumental task. When you see this, it's hard to believe that this week South Africa is to undergo a revolution, not through the power of weapons, through the power of the vote. Like these farm workers outside Cape Town, the whole country is taking its first tentative steps toward democracy. They are voting for the first time. Will they be safe when they go and vote? They've come to learn how to vote. Some of the more illiterate people from the rural areas, the very much rural areas, are, uh, are scared of voting. Near the fields, on the shop floor. Classes like this are going on all across the country. Millions of first-time voters getting a crash course in democracy. This is very important to me. We never get a chance to vote. On another farm near Cape Town, these South Africans gather for what they jokingly call the last white weekend. The majority of these people in this country is not ready. Jean Engelbrecht's family came here 300 years ago. To the more rural areas in this country, where people still wear uh, skins, some of them don't even know there's an election. Some of the people do not know the, the differences between the candidates or the parties. That's absolute is. rubbish. Why do you think the government's changed anyway? Through pressure from the people. These people who don't understand democracy. Rebecca Tetley is voting for Nelson Mandela. It's right. It's morally right. You just do the moral, morally right thing. We never say like the ultra-right wingers, we want to go back to the apartheid system. No, we don't say that. We just say we want our own place in the sun. Just like these first-time voters, that's South Africa's greatest problem and its greatest promise. 
Bill Whitaker, CBS News, Cape Town, South Africa.